This slide shows the calculation steps used to check for the biaxial bending of a reinforced concrete columns. As Eurocode, do not provide simplified method to design for the biaxial bending. We will need to design the columns by using the first principle. First, we need to determine that whether the biaxial bending needs to be checked. This is done by checking these criteria here. If these criteria are fulfilled, the biaxial bending can be ignored. As you see from the terminology here, for the biaxial bending check to be ignored, both this and this must be fulfilled, and either one of this and this needs to be fulfilled. It is basically checking regarding the slenderness ratio as well as the eccentricity. Both the slenderness ratio and the eccentricity needs to be checked. This leads to a situation that at least three of the components here must be passed so that the biaxial bending is not to be checked. It can be these three or it can be this tree. Let us look into the details in terms of the checking criteria. There are equivalent sections, slenderness ratio, and also eccentricity. The equivalent sections, B, E, Q, and H, E, Q, is determined by the radius of directions in terms of Y, Y, and Z, Z multiply with square root 12 and the slenderness ratio in terms of the y and z axis are given in the formula here as a function of effective length to the axis divided by the radius of directions in the axis and the eccentricity here is determined by the formula here which is basically a ratio of NED divided by the NED. These figures illustrate the information for the eccentricity as well as the B and H of the section. The checking on the slenderness ratio is between lambda Y and lambda Z. Both lambda y divided by lambda z and the lambda z divided by lambda y needs to be less than 2.0. That means no side of the axis will have the slenderness ratio significantly greater than the other axis. As for the eccentricity check, it is basically quantifying the ratio between the eccentricity with respect to X section's property. Based on the diagram here, it is basically EY over the H and EZ over the B. This is basically the comparisons of the ratio between the Y axis and the Z axis as well as Z axis and the Y axis. The value needs to be less than 0 0.2. You will need to satisfy either one of it in order to be considered without any by Excel bending. If you find that all this is satisfied and no by Excel bending check will be required, the column may be designed as an uni-axial bending column. However, if this is not fulfilled, you will need to design for the biaxial bending. Where your MED here will need to incorporate additional component as given here. Represent the effects of an axis over the other axis. There will be two possible conditions which quantify the ratio between the MED with its effective depth. H prime here represents the effective depth in the Z axis 
while B prime represent the effective depth of the reinforcement bar in the y axis. You make these comparisons to identify which one is more critical in terms of the ratio between the moment and its effective depth. If the moment in the z axis divided by its effective depth is greater than in the y axis, that means the moment in the z axis will govern the capacity. You will use the moment in the z axis to be incorporated with an additional moment caused by the another axis. There is a beta here, which is given by this formula. The beta is determined by 1 minus NED divided by BHFCK. It should range between 0.3 to 1.0. And the H prime per B prime is the comparison in terms of the ratio of the depth in the Z axis divided by the depth in the Y axis. What you see here is the MEDY is always divided with the B prime. For this case, it will be vice versa. If you found that the ratio here is less than the MEDY, that means the moment in the Y axis will govern the capacity and you will need to add an additional moment due to the Z axis. The MEDZ and the H primes are always together. And from the MED primes Y and Z calculator here, that will be replacing the MED for the design chart. Design for the main reinforcement bar based on the design chart obtained. This method of calculations you can refer to BS8110 clause 3.8.4.5. Based on the amount of reinforcement bar provided, you will need to check for the biaxial bending by using these equations. This equation is given in Eurocode clause 5.8.9 and it is basically a ratio between the moment load against the moment resistance of the column in both Z and the Y axis. The summations of this ratio in the power of A needs to be less than 1.0. The A here is determined from this table due to the ratio between the Asia load and its Asia resistance. The Asia load here will be the ultimate Asia load, while the Asia resistance is given by these equations which is the summations of Asia resistance of the concrete and the steel bars. AC represents the area of the columns and AS represents the area of steel bar. The design compressive strength of the concrete is given by these equations in the functions of the FCK divided by partial factor of safety of the concrete which is equals to 1.5. As for the design yield strength of the steel bar, it is determined by FYK divided by partial factor of safety of the steel which is 1.15 and it is equivalent to 0 0.87 FYK. Based on the ratio of NED per NRD, you are able to determine the factor A here. Should the number of the ratio fall in between the numbers, you may use interpolations to get the exact value of A. As for the moment resistance of the columns, it is basically determined from the reverse calculations of the column curves. You know the Asia loops acting on the column, and based on the amount of reinforcement bar provided, 
you are able to determine the moment resistance of the columns by referring to the column curve. The column is considered pass in the biaxial bending as long as it fulfills this criteria where the summations of these two needs to be less or equals to 1.0.